1989, my parents were getting a divorce. I had felt like a stranger in that house since I was 13. I was raised Mormon, and the hymns and songs that we'd sing in church every Sunday I knew didn't apply to me. They weren't for me. So when my parents asked me who I wanted to go with, I said I wanted to live somewhere else. I moved into a condo with three other roommates, and this is how I spent my senior year. Being a senior in high school, this also meant that our little apartment became the party place every Saturday in Fontana, California. And if you lived in Fontana in 1989 and you happened to be in high school, you probably were at one of my parties. One of those Saturday nights, I was standing on the balcony of the apartment and I was kissing my girlfriend at the time. When she walked inside the apartment, I noticed somebody standing at the other end of the balcony. He said to me, do you want to hang out sometime? I don't think you are who you think you are. His name was Joel. I would spend the next couple months at his house as much as I could. After his mom and stepdad would go to sleep at night, I would park my scooter down the street and then I would sneak in through the window. And then I would just lay in bed with him all night. Nothing ever happened, but I still can remember what it felt like, him being so close. I could hear the sound of him breathe as he slept at night. It just felt good. I finished high school and Joel moved to Fresno to live with his uh, father and his stepmom and his stepbrother. In Fresno, he found a new life. He went to a Christian high school. His father was a photographer. And Joel liked being in this, like, much more stable environment. And when I visited him, he talked to me about his newfound faith in Christ. And at this point, nothing physically had happened between us. I was still figuring out who I was, and even at this time, I had a girlfriend. But then something happened. I started visiting Joel pretty regularly in Fresno. I would take the bus. His stepmom used to always ask me if I wanted to sleep in the extra room as there was a bed in there. And I always said, no, I'll just sleep on the floor in Joel's room because we talk all night anyways. And we did. His stepmom was really kind and supportive and I think they all figured out something was going on, but me and Joel didn't. And at this point, the only thing we'd done is wake up in each other's arms a couple of times. And I was so inexperienced and I barely knew what to do, but we both understood that we could finally express ourselves to each other in a way that was beyond words. That Christmas he came down from Fresno to visit his mom and showed up randomly at a Christmas party. You have to remember this is in a time before a cell phone, so you didn't always know where people were and sometimes they just magically appeared in your life at a party. And there he was. I dropped my girlfriend off at home and I went over Joel's place. And I was so afraid. I didn't understand what was happening to me. I just knew that it felt beyond right. And in that house in 1990, right around Christmas, the wind smashing against the glass cheap windows, I fell in love. But you have to understand, I was very afraid. Shortly after that, I got a job. And then I was living in LA. And me and Joel used to write each other and call each other all the time. We both could feel that something was happening between us. He talked a friend of his into driving him down from Fresno to Los Angeles to visit me. But at this point, unfortunately, I was pretty scared of what was happening between us and I didn't know how to deal with it. I ended up hooking up with the girl who drove him down. That's how fucking stupid I was. Whenever we talked to each other about the two of us, we only talked about how close we were, what good friends we were, how much we liked being there for each other. Our relationship and the things that were happening between us physically, we never mentioned it, we never talked about it. So about a month after this, we were sort of disconnecting. At this point, I had a car. So one day I drove 
from Los Angeles to Fresno. And I knocked on his door. He opened the door, his beautiful eyes staring back. And I said, Joel, I love you. And he said, I don't think we should see each other anymore. And I said, I know you're right. We shouldn't. I hadn't talked to Joel since 1990. Until about a week ago. <laughs> 